Hi, my name is Helen and this is my channel, Helen Mary Jo. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're returning, thank you. And if you're a Hell's Bell, hello. Um, I am making a Sydney cake. Now, it's a bit close to Easter, really. Um, so I'm not sure. I'll try and get this out. It doesn't really matter. I just thought I'd show you. It's a very, very simple um, fruit cake. And um, it's... A traditional it used to be actually for mothering Sunday but then it became kind of more of an Easter cake and uh, it's surprising how many people have never heard of it I thought it was common knowledge basically it's a fruit cake and in the center of the fruit cake there is a layer of marzipan and then on the top there is another layer of marzipan and then there's 11 eggs and they represent the Apostles barring Judas who betrayed Jesus so um, it's kind of, you know, nice little meaning behind it. But as I say, it's a very, very simple cake. So I just thought I would make it. I've just realized that I haven't got the sugar out. So I'm gonna quickly stop the camera and then get the sugar, sugar ready. Right, so this is a very straightforward recipe. And the first thing you have to do is, is kind of the usual really. So you just have to mix the, um, butter and sugar together until it's light and fluffy. So um, I've just put that on a quite a high speed and I'll just whack it up a bit quicker. Two hundred grams of sugar and um, 250 grams of butter. So I'll just scrape that down the side. And you can see that's come together quite nicely. It's, not a, it's only an, an eight inch cake, so it's not terribly big. Right, so into the um, <clears throat> excuse me into the um, sugar and butter, I'm going to add the dry ingredients ingredients the dry ingredients that's 175 grams of flour um, with some baking powder and mixed spice added into it, 100 grams I can't speak 100 grams of ground almonds and um, I'll lower that and then I'm just going to gently, I've got four eggs here, just break those up, put a little bit in and then get the mixer going quite slowly. And then really, it's so simple. I mean, anyone who worries about baking, I don't really understand it because if you put all the ingredients in, as told, be easier really. So I've got to make this and then I've got to make Billy's birthday cake. So whiz and just push it down the sides. I mean it's as easy as I actually in this the recipe that I'll be linking it does say, oh, there was lemon zest in there as well. Um, it does say to soak your fruit, but I still had some fruit left from Christmas that had already been soaked in brandy. So I'm just using that and um, just very quickly, just giving that a quick, quick whiz. So it's combined. And that's it. Because I don't want that fruit to get Kind of mushed up. So the next part of this cake which makes it different is the marzipan element. Right so I have here um, it's an empty cereal packet which is basically wax paper. So I am going to roll the marzipan between this paper so it doesn't stick to the rolling pin 
Now I bought golden marzipan and white marzipan. There is slightly less than the recipe says. There's like 46 grams less than the recipe suggests. So I'm not sure how this is going to pan out, but um, it's at room temperature. So you can see, I'm just putting it in there so that I don't have to worry about getting it covered with um, icing sugar. So I put this on top of the tea towel to see if that'll stop it sliding all around the place because on top of the granite, it's not very happy. So I didn't bother putting this into a circle like a ball straight off because um, I'm going to use the trimmings for the top and that's when I'll concentrate a bit harder on making it into a circle. This doesn't want to be too thick. I mean, if you like mild pan, I suppose it just, just kind of melts into the cake, really. It does give it a nice flavour. Yeah. What I think I'm going to do is use this half for the, um, this packet for the centre of the cake and then use the white marzipan for the top. And I'll just use some of this to make the eggs for the apostles. Um, so I'll sort of alternate them, which I think will look quite nice. So take that off there. And then basically, where's my spatula gone? All you have to do is um, add your cake mix in here. I mean, it couldn't be easier, could it? And I need my circle of bacon. Um, of marzipan, and I've got a little, I think this is eight inches, yeah, so that needs to be a little bit bigger. terribly accurate because it's just going into the cake mix. It's more essential. Remember the moth show? Good enough. And then top it up with the cake mix. Because the thing with these cakes is they don't really rise, so you know, that can just sit quite nicely into the tin and this takes two hours to cook. I did think about doing it in the slow cooker but I've also as I said making another cake as well so I just thought oh you know what I'll just go with it it's Easter 
try not to look at the smart meter and see how much everything's costing. It's so, so shocking. The cost of gas and electricity is just shocking. I honestly don't know how young people with children, you know, I just don't know how they're managing. I really don't. I try not to look at the smart meter. It terrifies me. So that's it. So that's ready to go in the oven. 150 for two hours. So now I will, I won't worry about getting this um, marzipan ready until that cake is um, cooked. So um, now I'll get on with Billy's cake and I'll explain to you what I'm doing there. So I'll just clear this lot up and then um, get on with that. So I'm making basically a Victoria sponge, but the difference would be how I decorate it. Now I would normally do a chocolate cake at Easter for obvious reasons, but Rob doesn't eat chocolate. And this is kind of a, a birthday cake and an Easter cake. So the way I'm gonna overcome that is I'm going to decorate the top with chocolate that can easily be pulled off and um, I'll show you how I do that too. So as usual, it's the, um, so for two eight ounce tins, only, you know, shallow tins, it's 12 ounces of uh, baking fat and 12 ounces of sugar. And the same thing applies, just whiz that until it's, uh, creamy. I saw an interesting thing the other day about buttercream and it said to get the whitest buttercream you can it's all about how long you uh, mix it for so apparently you should do it for 20 minutes so five minutes five minute block that's a long time so I'll try that with buttercream for the icing that didn't take it long so easy nearly every cake I make is a variation on this it's, you know it's just my go-to it's basically equal out equal uh, baking fat flour sugar and eggs so 12 ounces of flour and I have added baking powder that was an interesting thing I saw the other day. They said, never buy self-raising flour. Um, it's pointless, this guy said. He was a baker. And he said, as soon as it's open, the um, raising agent disappears, basically. So it's only good the first time you use it. And after that, you, you need to add baking powder. So he said, just buy plain flour always. And then I've got six eggs in my lovely Easter bowls. So I'm going to put that on gently and I've got a teaspoon of vanilla extract in here too. I'm just going to gently bring that together. Just scrape it down, make sure nothing's been missed. And that is the sponge cake. So what I plan to do with this is to sandwich it together with cream and then put a plain buttercream top on and then put shards of chocolate, biscuits and um, marshmallows and just anything I can find really, maybe some Smarties if I've got some. Um, they're like M&M's, I don't, I don't think you've got Smarties in other countries. They're just like a little chocolate button covered in candy, candy coated, sugar coated. Um, yeah, so that is the cake mix ready. Now, 
I've lined these two tins and I've just, you know, folded the square into a, into four or eight and then just cut round um, to cover the cake tin. Rob's outside cutting the grass. Um, our grass had got so long that it was ridiculous. I thought we were going to have to get sheep onto it, but um, he managed to cut, do the first cut last week because we have got a robot lawnmower. I think you've met her before, Matilda, but it was too long for her to tackle. So until he's got it down to a reasonable length, um, we can't set Matilda free for the summer. So that's the noise you can hear in the background probably. Oh, you'll be pleased to know I got the dripping tap fixed. You know, this has got nothing to do with anything really, but um, I remember reading uh, this and it's resonated with a lot of people and that is the analogy drawn between a marriage and a tap and basically it says that every tap will drip at some point and you can either buy a new tap or you can get a new washer because even a new tap will start to drip and uh, that has saved my thinking on more than one occasion because it doesn't matter how many times you start again if you think that you can't take any more of this tap then <laughs> the new tap will drip too so I'm just going to pop those in the oven Oh, I shouldn't have sorted this out before then, shouldn't I? Rob didn't wash that up. Didn't I? Um, I'm going to pop them in the top shelf and I am just going to turn the heat up slightly. Otherwise it won't be hot enough. So that's just 20 minutes, 25 minutes for those to be cooked and then I'll turn it down again. There's Dolly wanted to go out as usual. So I'll clear this up and then we'll get to the decorating part of things, which is much more interesting. So I've got the Simnel cake here ready to be finished with the marzipan and I've got the Victoria sponge here that's been sandwiched with jam and I've got the butter icing that is basically uh, I did 400 icing sugar 200 butter unsalted butter and um, they're ready to go so I rolled out the icing uh, the marzipan again using the inside of the breakfast cereal packet which works very well because it stops it all getting sticky and uh, just have to slightly move that and just kind of make it fit really to do is get a teaspoon and go round and put a little indent in where you are going to pop the apostle disciple if you want to call it and so there's 11 of these like I said before to represent the apostles. And I'm going to finish this off in the same way that I did the Christmas cake, and that is with 
uh, ice and sugar and the blowtorch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I need to put them a bit closer together. There. Move <laughs> these along. Probably should have spaced those out before I started, but remember, good enough. And then This makes everything okay. <laughs> and it's a lovely flavour as well, actually. Gives some flavour. I mean, I'm not a big marzipan lover, but um, and then just slightly caramelise the icing sugar. The idea being there's a space for Judas. That'll do. So there we have it, and I will just tie a little narrow ribbon around there. In fact, I'll grab that now. I've just got this nice blue ribbon. And there we have it. Good enough to eat. Simnel cake, done. And now Billy's cake. So, as I explained before, I would normally do a chocolate cake for Easter but Rob doesn't eat chocolate so I'm just doing a Victoria sponge and then I only need to do this very roughly and I'll show you why I've done this sort of cake before for people like adults and children actually and it always goes down well because it's just a bit of fun I don't bother with the sides because I think actually it gets a bit sickly. I could have put some in the middle, but again, I think that would have been a bit too much. There's enough here, more than enough actually. If I get time, I'll make him a topper saying happy birthday but if not uh the candles will suffice i'm sure i will put it on a cake stand tomorrow but um i need to get it into the fridge tonight so i th i found these biscuits that i bought at christmas um and quite often we call billy bilbo so i'm just gonna pop Bilbo around here, like so, and then scatter some smarties on, some marshmallows. And the reason for doing it like this is because if you don't want to eat those elements, it's not difficult to take them off your slice. And it's just really, just have fun with it. You can put 
you know, you can put jelly sweets on there, Haribo, anything really. As I say, once it's got the candles in, and then because it is Christmas, just going to add a few mini eggs. Because like I say, if Rob doesn't want to eat platonic chocolate, um, it's very straightforward to pull them off. And that's it. Billy's Christmas Christmas cake, Billy's birthday cake. So I have had to rush that bit, I know, but it's just to say, just have fun with it. It's not difficult at all. Oh, I did mention the chocolate earlier. That didn't work. Um, anyway, have fun. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.